Hello, uh, and welcome to build blog number three. That's number three. So last time we figured out the noise issues um, and I've got a working prototype now where one input to the ADC, one output to the DAC, I can select any of the 12 uh, tones to tune it to and it does it. So that's nice. Um, so today's goal, as Winnie screams in the background, um, is to get the LEDs working. And the way we're going to use the LEDs is with the A, W, I, you know, as many times as I tell myself what the name of it is, I always forget with these chips, AW9523. And the AW9523 is a constant current LED driver. Uh, and it's not the first time I've used it. I used it in the MIDI fighter build with uh, Ney. Yeah, as you can see here in the circuit diagram that Ney did this circuit diagram, I I don't think I could ever do something as neat as this. He had to do this in Photoshop because there's just so much going on. Uh, but yeah, so this is the driver. And what you do is you, um, to do a constant current driver, if we then go to the guide written by my colleague Katni, what you can do is you can have the cathode of the LED go to the GPIO, uh, the anode go just to power, and then you don't need a resistor necessarily with this method because the limiting is happening within the chip. Um, and then you can do some fun stuff with it. You can do like PWM and things like that. Uh, I don't know if I'll get that fancy, but I like the idea of not having to worry about um, having in a resistor and stuff. Yeah, first step today will be getting the LEDs set. So what I'll do is I'll like hook everything up, um, run the like CircuitPython test code for the library. Um, and then the next goal that I would like to do today, if we don't run into any issues with the LEDs, is to get two channels going. Um, and I, I made some notes last night when I was thinking about it, about how I can, how I'll be able to do that in the code, because the, the main goal of this is to have four and four out. So once I can add in a second input and output, then it should be fairly simple to add in the third and fourth output. So that's kind of like the next big step. So uh, with that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start breadboarding. Okay, so I hooked up the AW9523. The LEDs are doing the, the demo blinky thing. It's very pretty. Uh, it's very smooth which I really like, which gives me some ideas, like maybe the buttons could have kind of secondary functionality as far as like menu selection that maybe would be a little bit more difficult with a rotary encoder because the only thing, anytime there's like one switch, sometimes you have to like be turning it for a while and things. So this could be like some nice selection things maybe. Uh, that could be fun. Um, so I think next is I'm going to, uh, integrate the AW9523 LED driving to what the like standard GPIO LED driving was doing before with the code where like when you press the button the LED comes on when you press the button the LED goes off so that's I'm gonna I'm gonna add that into the code now okay so I got the logic in um one thing that at first kind of tripped me up a little and I was like maybe I shouldn't do constant current is uh previously I had this kind of like easy way to toggle the LED. Basically, you know, truly this is what it's doing is toggling. So whatever the last value is, you know, reset it. Um, but with this, obviously you can't do that. So what I did instead, and I know people say like talking about code's boring, but these projects aren't possible without code. So I'm gonna talk about the code. Uh, I made a quick array of the LED currents. And then when I'm checking for the button status, um, if the, that LED's current is zero, then I set the constant current 25 and I update the array. Otherwise, you know, set the constant current to zero and update the array. And as you can see, remove the, and I can, there does seem to be, I don't know if it's the button breadboarding. I think it's the button breadboarding because some of them are definitely faster than others. But yeah, it's working. So all that logic is good. Uh, so next is like the the big the big thing, um, which is getting another channel in. And like I'm fairly confident in it. Um, 
but it is going to be a little tricky. So I think I'm probably going to like, you know, batten down the hatches, um, <laughs> get a cup of coffee and code that up. And hopefully when I come back, uh, we'll have two inputs, two inputs, two outputs. But first coffee, you gotta have coffee. Come on. All right. So I have two in, two out working. And I want to talk a little bit about the code that made it happen. So the way that the code's working with just one input, one output, is there's all these arrays that are holding all these values. Um, basically checking if a note is enabled, um, what voltage does that mean, and all these things. So, And then there's also now arrays for the LEDs, too. So basically, for each of those, for every channel that you want, you need an array that matches that. So I made, I created those arrays, and I made some functions. Um, this one is for setting the LEDs, whether they're lit or not. This one's for appending the note arrays to show what notes are enabled when you press the switches. Uh, this one is for clearing um, the array, basically like if the array is empty to default to 0.0, .0 volts, which is like a C2. Uh, this function, channel output, basically how it quantizes. So you're looking at the ADC voltage, comparing it to the array of notes that you have set, and then um, taking that and mapping it to the voltage for the DAC. Uh, the only thing is for this function, I couldn't get it to work. I had to explicitly still call all these things. So that's unfortunate. Um, sometimes I find uh, if you're trying to control certain aspects of something, uh, like a DAC, then you can't really call it out with a function, but I'll work on that. And then channel info, that's how stuff is printing to the screen. Uh, and yeah, so as a result, the loop gets a little bit easier to understand because kind of the big thing in the loop was this whole thing, which was how you, you know, added the notes to the arrays that were active. Um, so now, you know, the only thing is I'm explicitly calling out for each um, channel. So when I'm on channel one, which is set by the rotary encoder, um, then, you know, I'm explicitly saying if channel is zero, if channel is one, which isn't the best. Um, ideally, you'd want to like loop through and stuff like that. But um, just to get it functioning, that's how I did it. And I'll work on trying to get it better code wise. Uh, but it is working, which is nice. Um, so basically, I'm looking at the rotary encoder um, and I'm setting this value channel to be either zero or one, depending on where the rotary coder is turned. Um, and then uh, as I'm changing the channels, the LEDs are reflect which ones are set with this. And then here, we're still like, calling out the buttons. And then if channel is zero, then we do the set notes thing with the buttons. If channel is one, set notes, but for the other channel, then the whole time though, both ADC channels are being read and both DACs are being written to. And then depending on what channel you have set, that's how the, the screen displays. So let's do a quick demo. My hammer battery just died, so I have to change that real quick. So that's two inputs, out, two outputs, 
it's working. I'm not getting any weird glitching. So next is going to be uh, obviously four input, four output, which shouldn't be that tricky. That's just more just building out the arrays so that stuff's working, you know, as expected. So the stuff's there. And then after that is going to be, I, I want to start working on some different modes because the quantizers, like one aspect of it, and like I think probably like one of the trickier aspects, but uh, the other aspect is I want it to be able to take gates in to shuffle through patterns of notes that are predefined. Um, so like even like a chord progression, like doing like one, five, four chord progression, just as an example, uh, which is the functionality that was in the MIDI Melody Maker project that I mentioned back when I was kind of introducing this project that I did back in the day. Uh, so that's going to be next playing of gate inputs um, to trigger patterns. Uh, and I'm hoping that some of the function kind of stuff that I was defining, like, will be able to be brought over to that because I'll make the code a lot cleaner. Um, with the MIDI Melody Maker, I did not, everything's kind of like very discreetly coded and it makes the code a little messy, a little unruly. So if I can get some functions going, that'd be, that'd be good. Uh, I'm really excited. I'm really excited that I was able to get that going and I, I think it's on track to, to be a good, good project. Yeah. So um, that's going to do it though for this build log, build log number three. I did create a GitHub repo um, and I committed the one in one out code um, and I'll commit this to, which will then be updated to be um, four in, four out. But just so if folks want to take a look at it, um, you can you can do that. And I'll eventually like be adding circuit diagram things, that basically anything that goes with the project will be on that repo. So thank you for watching. Next build log will be gate inputs for patterns and also four in, four out. So until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.